Hey everyone, thanks for joining me. This is Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Clean Machine. We are plant-based fitness nutrition. And one of the key aspects of nutrition besides where do you get your protein is where do you get your omega-3s? Well, science has really changed our understanding of where omega-3s come from and which omega-3s are important to us. Now, I love when, you know, when I first became vegan 37 years ago, uh, people asked me, you know, where'd you get your omega-3s? You have to get them from fish oil. No. Okay. So now we know that's just not true. And as a matter of fact, new research is showing us why ALA, which comes from plants, is the essential fatty acid that comes from plants, actually the only essential fatty acid and it shows to be better and more effective than fish or algae. I'm going to I'm going to dive into the science, but first let me get through the disclaimer. This video is for informational educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure or prevent any disease. So, it's exciting when research finally catches up to what we know intuitively. When I became vegan 35 37 years ago, uh, I knew in my heart of hearts, wait a minute, it's got to be right that we get our nutrition from plants because everything else fit. There were a few things that didn't seem to fit like, hey, wait a minute, are animal proteins better than plant proteins? Well, now we know that's just not true. As a matter of fact, great new study coming out showing uh, on the Nana study that Mike the Vegan talked about just today, as a matter of fact, check out Mike the Vegan. He does, he covers some great research coming out, showed that actually strength gains were higher in women over a long period of time. And this is a big study, it's a non as study, it's the a study on all the nurses, huge study. So it had a big one and it looked at frailty, which is how much strength and, uh, you know, all the different things of becoming weaker and unable to uh, be uh, healthy and found that plant-based proteins were actually better than all animal proteins, including dairy at maintaining and preventing frailty up to 30 to 40% better. I mean, huge difference. And uh, for every just 5% of proteins from plants that you switched out from animal proteins, increased strength and overall less frailty as you age. So real important to get more of those plant proteins in your diet. But what about omega-3s? Well, first, uh, let's just break it down real simple. I got to go through these simple steps. I know some of you have heard this from some of my other videos before, but I want to make this a little recap. I'll make it really brief. Number one, ALA is the only essential fatty acid omega-3 for humans. There is only one. EPA and DHA are not essential for humans. That's because we can create our own. Once we have ALA, we can turn ALA into all five of the other forms. I know a lot of people don't even know there are six different forms of omega-3, but yes, there are six forms of omega-3. ALA, SDA, ETA, EPA, DPA, and then finally at the very bottom, DHA. I'm going to go ahead and put this up on the screen so you can see what that looks like. There's ALA at the top here, and it converts down to stereotonic acid, and then to ICO, and then to EPA, DPA, and then finally at the bottom, DHA. Okay, what's really important about that graph is that it's unidirectional. I'm going to go ahead and put up uh, that study right on the screen, copy and paste in the comment section. Why is unidirectionality important? And I'm gonna explain that. I'll put that up on the screen so that you can see it. So this study said compound isotope, uh, specific isotope analysis means that they uh, uh, tagged the omega-3 before we consumed it so that we could actually trace it, see where it's going, what it's doing in the human body. This is really important. They found that there is no retro conversion of DHA here at the bottom. Let me pull that up and I'll show you that on the screen again. 
So they're up. Oh, let me guy, I gotta get rid of the uh, comments and hide that. Okay, so DHA, you can see down here at the bottom, there is no retro conversion. So DHA can't convert back up to any of the rest of the forms that our body needs. So if you are taking DHA as a supplement from fish oil, or from algae oil in its preformed state. That means the DHA is formed outside of the body by another animal or another plant. It is stuck down here. That's all you'll ever get is DHA. If you take ALA, which is up here, you can get all of the different six forms of omega-3 that our body uses for healthy and optimal health. DHA is stuck at the bottom. It can't do anything but be DHA. That's it. That's all you get. You get only DHA. Now, even more importantly, once that DHA is there, it actually stops the conversion process. It says, wait a minute, we've got enough DHA down here at the bottom. Stop converting down any further. So what our genes do, our genes turn on and off a epigenetic switch. And that switch says produce more enzymes or stop producing those enzymes. The enzymes that are little green arrows in between each one of these, those are enzymes that do the conversion process. So when you consume alpha linoleic acid or ALA from plants, only comes from plants, animals don't make ALA, only plants do. It is the only essential fatty acid that humans require in the omega-3 category. This is the only one because our body can make all the rest of them without it. Now, what makes this interesting is that if you consume just EPA, you see the arrow here, and DHA, which is what is found in fish or algae, only preformed EPA and DHA, you are getting none of the three up here at the top. ALA, SDA, and ETA. Zero. As a matter of fact, they did a study and they found that um, those taking fish oil on a regular basis had zero. <laughs> zero. Let me see if I can do it. There we go. Zero. Had none of these three important uh, omega-3s. So are they important? Yes. And I'm going to show you that in just a second. And this study, study number three, I'll put in the comment section and post it on the screen so you can see it. So this study is the determinants of fluid intelligence in healthy aging. Omega-3 PUFAs or polyunsaturated fatty acids status and the frontoprietorial cortex structure. The frontal lobe is where we do most of our major thought processing. So what they found is those with the highest amounts of EPA, DPA, uh, SDA, and ETA, the top three omega-3s, those with the highest had the highest IQs, about 10% uh, higher IQs, or 10 points rather higher IQs than those who did not. Remember, if you're consuming algae or fish, you are not getting any, zero of the first three omega-3s that our brain uses to preserve. The, the study actually said they had higher gray ma uh, brain matter volume. That means those three are actually protecting the brain from shrinking, from deteriorating as we age. That was real important to me. So this is why it's so important. Okay, so this is why that unidirectional conversion is really important and why you want to start at the top with ALA. But we didn't really have so much research. We had that nice study that showed ALA, uh, SDA, and ETA improved brain health better than those just taking EPA and DHA. Remember, they're at the bottom here. Um, you're not getting any of those three. Let me take that comment down. You're not getting any of those three if you're consuming algae or fish oil or any animal products. If you consume meat, uh, dairy, eggs, or whatever, you're getting some omega-3 stew as well, but you're not getting any of these. These are found in plants. And what is the highest source of that in plants? Well, you guessed it. 
Uh, let me actually take down the, the thing and I will pull up another one in just a moment. Ahi flower is the richest source of ALA SDA of any plant in the entire plant kingdom, as shown to be up to four times more efficient and effective than flax, better than chia, better than hemp, better than sacha enchi, better than each one of those things. I'll pull the graph up here and you can see it for yourself. These are all the different sources, uh, as you can see over here, uh, perilla, um, all the different sources, ahi flower number one and by far. All right, so let's get back to number. Number one, ALA is the only essential fatty acid human beings require for proper and optimal functioning. So the big, the big thing on knock on ALA was, hey, wait a minute. When we draw blood from humans, we don't see much conversion, only about 1% conversion rate of ALA in the bloodstream. Not yet. Yeah, so? It, it wasn't until we had radioisotope tracing when we can attach a radioisotope to that so that we can see where that ALA is going. Now we know, check out this graph. Now we know that once ALA actually enters the digestive system, it gets into the circulatory system and then stores in adipose fat, that's the top one on the right there, in our liver and in other tissues, including brain tissue. So why would the body store all this? Well, as a matter of fact, that, that radioisotope tracing study actually showed we store ALA up to a year, maybe even more. Now that's incredible. So we're hanging, our body can actually preserve this ALA. So the con most of the conversion of ALA is happening inside of tissues fat tissues, liver tissues, brain tissues, cells, uh, human skin cells. This is where the conversion is happening. You're not going to see it happening in the blood. Now, remember, if ALA can convert to all of these different forms, and we need different amounts at different times, depending on what the requirements are. If you have an injury, you're going to need you have more inflation, inflammation, you're going to need more DHA. So then ALA can come out and convert all the way down to DHA. If you require some certain um, heart health things like uh, lowering blood pressure, you're going to need more EPA. So ratio is really important. Now let's take a look at the next study of ratios. Okay, let me find it. Oh, I don't have it. All right. Well, anyway, they looked at the studies and they found sometimes having an EPA ratio is better for certain disease states. Sometimes having a higher DHA ratio is better. And sometimes having a higher EPA is worse, can make things worse. Same with DHA. So our body has a way of regulating this. If you want to regulate this, what you'll do is have epigenetics turn on and off the enzymes to convert this. So we have an internal regulatory system. That's why we start with ALA, which is safe and effective, and it converts in real time using epigenetic switches, which turn on the enzymes that do the conversion process. So we have exactly the amounts of each one of these six exactly when we need it in real time. Women need more of X. Men need more of X. Uh, when you have diabetes, you need different ratios. When you have obesity, you need different ratios. When you have heart conditions, you, you need different ratios. When you have arthritis, you need different ratios. This is known that these fluctuations are constantly happening. So when you take preformed EPA and DHA, from outside of the body already converted and stick it in there, you're upsetting and, and, and messing up the whole regulatory process. The body is self-regulating through using epigenetics, turning off on and off the production of those enzymes to only produce exactly what it needs. It's storing all that ALA in the tissues and then converting it in real time to SDA, to ETA, to DPA, to DHA. I need more EPI. Uh, and that is doing this in real time. 
you should let your body do the conversion because it, it knows exactly what it needs for your age, for your gender, for your body type, for your health condition, exactly in that moment. It's all self-regulated. This is why it's so important to give the body the, the number one precursor, why ALA is the only essential medias. Now, let's get to this study that just came out last week. So we knew all this, but we needed a study to actually show there is benefits above and beyond just consuming those two EPA and DHA from fish or algae. Well, we finally got it. <laughs> and I'm really excited to, to bring this to because it shows something really unique. And let me grab it. Okay. I put it in the comment section so that you guys with the links I always provide the links and i'll put it up on the screen so those of you just watching on youtube can also look at it too so this study is called plant-based omega-3s may boost heart health reduce risk of heart disease researchers found that consuming ala only ala not epa or dha ALA is found in plant foods like walnuts and flax seeds was associated with 10% lower cardiovascular disease and a 20% reduced risk of fatal coronary heart disease or heart attacks. When this is really interesting, this next sentence is really fascinating because this really changes the conversation. When people with low levels of omega-3 in their diet ate ALA, they saw a benefit in terms of cardiovascular health. Okay, that's, that's pretty understandable. You consume more. If you're low in omega-3s, you consume more, you get heart health benefits. But the second part of this sentence, the second sentence here is what's eye-popping. When people and I'll read it too because it's not on the screen here. It doesn't make it all the way on the screen. When people with low levels of, but when people with high levels of omega-3s from animals, that's the EPA and DHA, they had high levels already. That means they were probably supplementing or eating a lot of fish. When these people with high levels had omega-3 from other uh, sources, and ate more ALA, so already had high EPA and DHA levels, but consumed ALA on top of it, boom, they also saw health benefits. And that's because when you're consuming EPA and DHA, you're not getting any ALA. And the ALA itself has health benefits. So even those taking fish oil with high levels of EPA and DHA, when they added plant-based omega-3s, they saw additional health benefits that they weren't getting from high levels of omega-3 from fish and algae. Boom, there it is. Finally, we have a study showing the benefits are coming from ALA, not from EPA and DHA. Why? Because it's really clear, this unidirectional conversion of ALA all the way down here, and, and that, that it's unidirectional. It can't retroconvert. It can't go back to any of the other top three forms. That's the problem with EPA and DHA. Now, does EPA and DHA, if you take it, have benefits if you're low? Of course it does, because at least you're filling in the EPA and DHA, but you're not getting any ALA. You're not getting any SDA. You're not getting any EPA, uh, ETA when you do that. And we know those improve brain health. We know those improve heart health from this study that just produced. This is exciting because it's showing us, one, you can get all of your omega nutrition you need from plants, from ALA and SDA. Two, that there are benefits that you cannot get from fish oil or algae oil. So I really encourage people to take a hard look if you're consuming algae oil or fish oil, at least consume some, some ALA from plant sources as well, because it adds benefits, brain health benefits, higher IQ, 
more preservation of gray brain matter. This is published nutritional research. We know this by the studies. And heart health, reducing heart attacks, fatal heart attacks up to 20%. I mean, that's big, that's significant. And it only comes from the ALA, not the EPA or DHA. And remember, you can get all the EPA and DHA you need. All right, so the big question was, can you get enough? And this, uh, this uh, study I'm gonna post up here answers it just completely. So I'll recap the study basically, but let me put it up on the screen so uh, everyone can see it here. The study is entitled, Is uh, DHA Synthesis, I'll put it up on the, Is DHA Synthesis from ALA sufficient to supply the adult brain. So it goes in a full step-by-step -step process of showing how much conversion is happening, where that conversion is happening, how much DHA is actually getting stored by the body after it's being converted from ALA. And yes, ALA actually does create enough DHA. So much DHA you can have up to up to 20 years worth of DHA stored in your tissues. It was really interesting that they've, they've done this research where they removed all the DHA from the diet. And what happened? The DHA in the bloodstream went up. <laughs> you're like, how is that even possible? You're not get, if you're not getting any from your food, then your body starts taking all that stored ALA and rapidly converting it to DHA, pushing it into the bloodstream to make sure your brain gets everything it needs. Do you see how beautiful this system is? How much of a great backup ALA is? Because it can sit there in its ALA state, and then as your body needs it, convert it quickly and efficiently to all of the different forms exactly in the right ratios for your age, for your, for your gender, for your health conditions. It is perfectly set up to do this in real time. And every time you take a preformed source from an animal, remember animals like meat, dairy, eggs, fish, all have this preformed EPA, EPA and DHA at the very bottom. They're the bottom three rungs of the ladder. You're not getting any of the top three you're only getting those. And when you do that, you're upsetting the balance. You're telling the body, okay, now you have a bunch of this in here. What do you do with it? Well, the body is probably going to store it, but it's probably going to burn off. They've shown that if you have excess DHA in your system and you take it up to 70 to 80% of that, it's just going to be burned for calories. So you're just doing expensive supplementation at that point. You don't even need it. Let your body choose when and where and how to convert that ALA. The health benefits for heart health, for brain health are clinically proven higher and better than fish oil and algae. I will never take algae. I have never taken algae in my 37 years of, of, of uh, being vegan. And I will never put that in my body because it upsets the balance. I really encourage all of those vegan companies out there or trying to supply vegans with algae oil to understand this research and stop, stop with the preformed. It's mimicking the bad situation that we're getting from fish oil. Fish oil is preformed. We thought, oh, that's the best form. So let's mimic it. Let's take algae out and mimic preformed. That was wrong all along. We shouldn't have been getting preformed. We should have been getting the very number one first precursor, which is ALA, the only true essential fatty acid that the human body needs. Now, it's interesting. I'll pull the, uh, the, the picture back up again. So it's interesting that carnivores actually don't do this conversion at all. These first three they don't even have in their system. They eat animals, which only have EPA and DHA, so they don't even have this top three system at all. This shows us human beings are herbivores. All herbivores have this five-step conversion process. Carnivores start right here. EPA is their essential fatty acid. Ours, human beings, and all herbivores 
start here at ALA because it comes from plants. Get it? Plants is what human beings should be getting this in. That's why our body created this whole system. That's why this system is in every single herbivore on the planet and why uh, animals who eat other animals must start down here because they're not getting any of this, which only comes from plants. It is so clear physiologically that we are herbivores. It's clear in the essential amino acids. It's clear in the essential fatty acids, uh, essential amino acids, proteins. Humans have nine essential amino acids or eight, depending on how you want to look at it. Carnivores have 10. They have up to 11. So taurine is an essential amino acid for carnivores. All herbivores produce their own taurine. Guess what humans do? Yep. We produce our own taurine. Taurine is not essential for human beings. It is essential for carnivores. One more example, both essential fatty acids and omega-3s shows us all herbivores convert all six steps. Carnivores don't, they have three steps. All herbivores have nine essential amino acids even, and carnivores have 10. They have that taurine. Plants don't make taurine. So the only place carnivore animals can get their taurine is by eating other animals. Herbivores produce their own taurine. So all of the essential amino acids are made by plants for herbivores, just like humans. It's so clear physiologically that human beings are herbivores by the essential amino acids, by the essential fatty acids, and by the way the food interacts with our microbiome, with our health, for our nutrition. And I talk about all the rest of those. But I love this new study that shows ALA has heart health and brain health benefits higher and above and beyond, which means you cannot get those health benefits by consuming EPA from fish oil or algae. This should finally be the nail in the coffin to say that human beings should be solely getting their omega-3s from plants to get all of the health benefits that they can provide that EPA and DHA and all other animal products cannot. It is impossible. They cannot supply the ALA, SDA, and ETA that our body needs, our brain needs, that our heart needs. This shows us why we are herbivores and why we should be getting these things from plant-based nutrition. Why do I talk about this? To try to convince you to become a vegan? No, that's not it. I want the best in health for you. I want you to get the best nutrition so that you prevent disease states, so that you don't have to suffer through disease states, so your children and your spouses don't have to suffer watching you go through disease states. That's why I am big into exercise, because I know the health benefits of fitness. And that's why I talk about plant-based nutrition, because the science is just overwhelming why plants are better than consuming animals for their protein, for their essential fatty acids, for their polyphenols, for their phytonutrients, for the antioxidants, for the fiber, for God's sakes. There is zero fiber in any animal product. Fiber feeds our gut microbiome biome, and up to 70% of our digestion depends on our microbiome. Our immune system depends on our microbiome. It is where we gain health is from plants. The more plants you can consume is not an all or nothing. The more plants you can consume, the better you are going to live the more health you are going to experience in your lifetime, the more you can enjoy long health, watching your kids grow up, playing with your friends, enjoying the wealth that you create and a lifetime of hard work, gain all those benefits. That's what I want for you. It's not the dogma about being right or wrong. It's not ego. It's none of that. Is I genuinely want the best in health for you. And when I see science like this and it explains really clearly why you can get better health benefits from plants than consuming animals, I'm going to share it with you in the case that you might want to use that and apply it to your health and get benefits for your health that you cannot and will not get by consuming animal products. 
I really hope you enjoyed this. Please share. Let's get this information out to more people. We can save lives. We can improve lives by getting this information out there and letting people know that the science was wrong all along. It's okay that it's wrong. That's great that we know something better. It's not, you know, I'm trying to prove somebody wrong or anything. No, it's saying, hey, wait, we have new information that is more correct. Let's use that. Let's get that information out to the mainstream because the vast majority of people in this public think fish oil is the way to go. And it is not. ALA is better. Clinically proven. These studies all point to this and why. And I explain the whole avenues of this. Check out the studies. Share it with people in the field of education. Share it with the people in the field of medicine. Let's get this information out into the consumers, out into the mainstream public so we can save some lives, so we can prevent some suffering. And for God's sakes, let's leave the animals alone. We've wiped out over 50% of all of the fish in the oceans and all of the sea life in the oceans. And we're right on the verge of tipping that iceberg to cause a complete wipeout and collapse of all life in our oceans. Let's don't go there. Let's don't go there based on a myth that fish oil is, is good for us. It's not. It interferes with our own body's regulatory systems for omega-3. It causes imbalances. It causes disruptions in our system. You can get all what you need and let your body do its magic, knowing exactly what it needs. Um, I, I really encourage people to uh, you know, talk about this, share this information, share the studies with people in, in the know. Let's get this information out to the consumers and change the way this world is. Thank you for watching. Please share if you can, if you feel so imposed, and let's get this information out there. Plants and fitness, plant-based physical nutrition, let's get it done and let's show the world how to enjoy life to its fullest. Thanks for watching.